Hey everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to be creating the groundwork, all of the assets and the main things that the project will need before diving into any blueprints and things. So this is just going to be setting everything up like the models and the materials and the base blueprint classes. So to begin with I already have the assets folder, a materials folder and a blueprints folder created. This is just an empty project though, no assets imported. And the first things I'm going to do is I want to go into the blueprints folder and create a few base classes. So we're going to have our game mode. So we'll go in and create the BP underscore game mode base. And I'll explain the whole base thing a little bit later. Uh, but for now, just follow along. Name these as you wish, but I'm going to be following that naming convention for a reason. Now the player in this is going to be just a standard pawn class so that we have full control over how and where it moves. We're not going to worry about anything inheriting from the movement components that you'll find in the character classes and things. So I'm going to go in, create a new class of type pawn. And again, I'm going to call this one the BP underscore pawn base. And they're the two main classes that I wanted. I'm also going to, we'll just use the map that you started in. If you don't already have this one available or showing, just because it's got the light and everything in there, just press Control and N, go to the default map. And then inside of here, just going to press Control and S to save this, create a new folder under content, call this one maps. And I'll just rename the map down here and I'll call this one main. With that done, we'll hit the save button. We now have our main map saved in the maps folder. And with all of that ready, we can go into the project settings. We'll go to maps and modes. We're going to set the default game mode to be the game mode we've just made. And then if we drop this down, we can set the default pawn to be the pawn that we've just made. So this just means that when we start implementing our classes and getting all of the logic in there, this is all ready to go. And we can just press play and everything's going to spawn in as we need it for the default classes, at least. Now, the reason that we set the map up as well as whilst we're in here, we can just drop these down and we'll make the default map for our game and the editor our main map. Now, if this is one of the first times you're getting into the Unreal Engine, just to explain what this means, the editor startup map is the map which is displayed when you first reopen the project. So you'll see that before we changed this, it was the default map, which is the one I had and that we've just saved out. And the game map, of course, is when you package and build the game and you give this to other people. This is going to be the map, the first map that they see. So it's normally going to be something like a main menu or a menu screen map. But for this case, just in case we do want to do some builds and tests, then we have that ready as well. Now, one other thing, actually, in the project settings I like to do, and I'm just going to include this rather than me doing this off screen and you wondering why mine looks different, is that for some reason Epic have decided that auto exposure is a great thing to have by default. So I'm just going to come in, untick this, and it just means that when you press play, you don't get this horrible kind of glare thing happening. So if we take this back on, um, it kind of adjusts the color. It's meant to represent or recreate uh, adjusting the color to your eye. But the problem is, is that when we're creating things like the colouring and the materials and everything, we're going to be testing it without the auto exposure, so a kind of a darker hue. And then when we press play, everything looks completely different, and you have to go back and change materials if it's not looking as you like you want. That's the auto exposure gone. And then the next thing is we're going to come into the assets. Uh, so if you don't already have one, create a new folder called assets and a new folder inside of that called materials. I'm going to right click and create our base material. So I'm going to call this one M underscore flat. This is going to be really simple. We're going to come into our flat material. I'm going to press V and left click to create a vector three scalar parameter. So this is something that we can change in a dynamic material. I'm going to call this one color. Plug this in to the base color. And I'm also going to create three other scalar parameters, but these are just standard float variables. And to do this, you just hold S and left click. And I'm going to call the first one met for metallic. I'll call the next one spec for specular and then the final one we're going to call rough for roughness as you might have guessed we're then just going to plug those into their respective values i'm going to grab the roughness and i'm going to give this a default value of one just because i don't really like the standard shine where everything looks like uh, cheap plastic and then hit save to make sure that the shaders have been compiled and you can come into here i know a few things that we're going to need will be a few colors so i'm going to make a, a white red and gray and we'll go from there and add more if we need them so right click off of the m underscore flat create the first material instance and we'll call this mi underscore flat white so the naming convention is uh, mi for material instance then we've got the word flat because it's uh, a child of the flat base material and then white because it's the the white variant of it if we come into this one tick the color on Turn this down to a kind of off-white color and we have our first material and then it's just normally a bit easier to control w off of this to create a copy of course one flat gray and again uh, the color is already ticked here so we can just come down and turn this kind of off black a uh, dark gray color and finally i said we're going to have a red so i'll copy this again call this one flat red 
come into here and just make a kind of, uh, in fact, I think in the demo I had orange. So I'll just recreate that kind of orange color that I had uh, just to keep it fairly similar. Save this. We've now got at least a few things ready. When we start adding in obstacles, players, and so on, we have some materials ready to just stick on them for quick prototyping. Final things we don't need are going to be this floor and the reflective sphere. Now, one other thing to mention is that the skylight uh, doesn't actually do anything, the default one. So if we delete the skylight, you can see nothing changed from the viewport here. So the world didn't actually have its colors changed. Skylights can make things look a little bit softer. It takes the color in from the sky. And even in something as simplistic as we're going to be making, that can still look quite cool. I tend to, in all projects, remove the default one because it doesn't do anything. But now watch what happens to the world when I drag in a new skylight. See, everything kind of lit up a little bit. It took the color from the clouds and the sky uh, and kind of cast that onto the floor. So completely up to you, but I'm going to choose to drag in a new skylight so it does actually have some effect. And the other things we don't need will be the, uh, the floor base. I just left that to demonstrate the skylight. Okay, very final thing is we just want the representation for the obstacles and the player, which uh, for the demo that I provided was all cubes, just because everyone can have access to this so anybody can follow along. And a nice simple way to get a cube into your folder structure is to drag in the cube from the basics panel here, right click on the cube, convert the cube to a static mesh, put this into the assets folder. Under this, I'm gonna create a new folder called meshes and we're gonna call this the SM underscore cube. Okay, so we can now see that in here we have our static mesh, just a standard mesh. The good thing about this is it is already UV'd. We know that it's 100 units by 100 units, so we can work with a standard scale if we're using the one provided by Epic. And the only thing this doesn't come with is collision. So all we want to do is with the cube selected, we're gonna to go to the collision option and we're gonna add a box simplified collision. And you can see it's just added the green outline. Don't forget to do this because that will get really confusing if you're several videos into the playlist and your obstacles or player isn't colliding with something, probably because you're using this default cube and you forgot to turn the collider on it. So make sure that you've done that. Uh, save the cube with the collision enabled. Make sure that you save everything. I've just did a quick Control Shift S to save everything in the project. And that's pretty much everything that we need. The only other thing is to remember to take the cube from the scene. We don't need that anymore. And before I forget, I did mention that I will explain the naming convention, and that is to have the word base after a lot of my pawns and game modes. And the reason I do this, and this is more of my thinking on much bigger scope projects, but I just want to get into that mindset with you guys as well, is that any class that might end up having a child of itself uh, to inherit functionality, it's good to make a base class of it. And then this would mean that if you wanted to have different types of pawn classes, for example, uh, the default one being maybe the slowest to move sideways, maybe also being slightly thinner, then that would be your base pawn class. You could then, because that's going to have a lot of functionality that everything's going to need, uh, any other pawn class at least is going to need such as uh, colliding, particle effects, the uh, the movement sideways and things like that. All of that can be used in an inherited child class. So then what you would do is you can right click on any classes and create a blueprint child of that class, which will inherit all of the important things, but then on the child class, which you might want to make slower and maybe wider, then that could be the child class. You don't need to reprogram all of the movement stuff. You just need to tweak the variables of the scale of the character, the movement speed, and things like that. So this is a, a good habit I find to get into in a lot of projects is to expect uh, certain pawns and game modes and things to be just the base class of what you end up using for different parts of your game and just to make things more easily extendable and reusable. That's everything for the setup though, so I'll leave that video here for today. As always, if you've enjoyed the video or found this useful, please do leave a like and share the video around, that always helps and is much appreciated. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.